The term bottleneck is everywhere when we're talking about PC gaming performance, but if you're just getting started and you're planning your first PC build, this might be a hard concept to grasp. Today, we're going to look at what a bottleneck is, explain why it happens, how to find them, and also how to avoid them. So let's first look at what a bottleneck is and where the term comes from. Before we start talking about PC components, let's look at what a bottleneck is in its simplest form. Take this bottle of water here, for example. Let's turn it upside down and open the lid. Now, the water is flowing out of the bottle, but only at a rate at which the opening will allow. The wider the opening is, the faster the water will flow out of the bottle, and the smaller the opening is, the harsher the bottleneck, and of course, the water will flow a lot slower. Now, imagine that instead of water, we have frames, and these frames are being displayed onto your monitor. Displaying the frames is, of course, your PC, but let's stick with the concept of a bottle for now. The opening of the bottle can represent any component in your system that may restrict the number of frames that could potentially be displayed. Essentially, the weaker the component is, the more it will restrict the number of frames being drawn and displayed to your monitor. And of course, if all of the components in your system are balanced, it's possible to have virtually all of the potential frames displayed to your monitor. The most common bottleneck that you'll see in PC gaming is a CPU bottleneck, meaning that your CPU will be restricting the potential number of frames being drawn from your GPU. The simplest explanation for how this happens is that your CPU is just not powerful enough to keep up with your GPU. But let's dive a little deeper and take a look at what's really going on here. Take a look at this timeline here for example. This is a game being rendered at 60 frames per second, which is equal to 1 frame every 16.67 milliseconds. The CPU, in addition to many other tasks, has to prepare sending a draw call to the GPU, sending it some data including textures, shaders, rendering objects, and buffers on the next frame which is to be rendered. The GPU renders this frame and it's then displayed onto your monitor. It then receives the next frame which is to be rendered, and while that's rendering, the CPU is preparing the next frame for the GPU. So here we have no bottleneck, and that's because the CPU is preparing the frames faster than the GPU can render them. If the CPU is on the weaker side though, the GPU will be rendering frames faster than the CPU can prepare them, and this right here is the bottleneck. Your GPU could be utilized 100% if your CPU was more powerful, however it spends some time idling and not rendering frames. In this example, the GPU can render frames every 16.67 milliseconds, but the CPU needs 25 milliseconds to prepare them. Now in this 25 millisecond duration, the CPU is doing a lot of work. In addition to preparing the frame data for the GPU, it needs to process other things, such as any AI, game logic, physics, and of course, any other background tasks that may be occurring in other programs. These tasks increase load on the CPU and can therefore increase the amount of time that it takes to send a draw call to the GPU. This is why some games are more CPU intensive than others. For example, Battlefield 1 multiplayer is quite CPU intensive, seeing as there is a lot of network data, game logic, and physics to handle, whereas riding your horse through a forest in Witcher 3 is a lot less CPU intensive, as you could imagine. Okay, so that's CPU bottlenecks, but what about GPU bottlenecks? Well, despite CPU bottlenecks being a bad thing when it comes to gaming, a GPU bottleneck is actually desirable. Essentially, what this means is that your CPU is processing all of the game and frame data faster than your GPU can render it, resulting in 100% utilization of your GPU. At first, this sounds bad, right? But seeing as your GPU is what renders and displays the frames to your monitor in the first place, the fact that it's rendering 100% of the frames that it possibly can is a good thing, and it's exactly what you want when you're gaming. Now, there are a few ways that you can reduce CPU bottlenecking in your system and improve GPU utilization in gaming if it isn't at 100%. And the first and most obvious one is to close any unnecessary background programs that you have open. By closing that PowerPoint presentation that you never got around to finishing, or those 10 Chrome tabs that you forgot to close, you'll be able to reduce the load on your CPU and hence process game data a lot faster. This means that those draw calls that we were talking about earlier will now be sent faster by the CPU as it's now under less total load. 
and this means that your GPU won't be waiting around as long for draw calls, netting higher GPU utilization. Another quick tip is to overclock your CPU if possible. Once again, it'll be able to process the game data a lot quicker, which in turn means higher GPU utilization again. To test for bottlenecks, you can use a program like MSI Afterburner. Simply enable CPU usage and GPU usage in the OSD, and you'll now be able to monitor these two values while you game. If your GPU usage is at 100% consistently, then you're good to go and there's nothing to worry about. However, if your CPU is reaching 100%, then unfortunately you have a CPU bottleneck. It may be time to upgrade or try those couple of tips that I mentioned before. As always guys, a huge thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button if this video helped you out and I'll see you all in the next one.